In this video, we are going to be replacing the AC condenser on a Freelander Cascadia. To remove the a AC condenser, I think it's easier if you just remove the, the grill to get, to get into it. You don't have to remove it, but uh, it gets easier if you do remove the grill. So the reason the, this um, AC condenser got damaged is because the this grill right here, the, the screen, it was touching against the AC condenser. All the clips that hold the screen in place are broken. So this is what caused the, the damage on the AC condenser. To remove the grill, it's pretty easy. It only takes four bolts. It goes one right there, one there, right there, and one on the other side. It takes a T30 Torx to remove the bolts. We already took them off. Once you remove the four bolts, all you have to do now is lift the, the grill up. It only has like four four clips that hold the the grill in place. And those latch onto the to the hood right here. Some companies put double tape in the hood so it's gonna be hard to take it off but but most likely you won't have that so this is where the screen was touching as you can see we are tr we already tried to fix it with some weld you can fix them if if the condenser is, is not too damaged if your condenser has a little a little small hole you can try to weld it um, as you can see over here it had a big hole we tried to fix it but it was too too big of a damage already so we're gonna be replacing the whole thing and right here on the side we can see that it was starting to leak already too so if you get a leak from this side um, it's recommended to just buy a new condenser to remove the AC condenser it has four bolts two on each side two there and two on this side and it also has your your lines it has this uh, nut right here and, it, and that one takes a, a half inch and also the the four bolts So those lines you just pull out so this is the new part we're gonna be putting in as you can see it already had, comes with the bushings this is the part number for the original part from the dealer and they also make um, some aftermarkets and those run for like 200 this one was $400 at the dealer in case you want to buy one of the aftermarkets uh, I'll leave the link in the description so now we're just gonna clean the area right here and remove the old washer seals Just make sure you clean the area and here we have the new two washer seals make sure you put a uh, brand new ones for no free and leaks so the new one comes with this uh, cap right here just remove it Now we're just gonna bring in the new condenser. Make sure you align it to the four bolts. So those two are aligned. So 
So now they're aligned. Now just put the, the washers and the nut on all four of them. Now we're just gonna tight the four bolts. You don't have to put you don't have to put a lot of force into them. So now the four bolts are tight. Now we're just gonna put it put in the the lines back in as you can see they fall right in place and put the nut back in So the condenser is in place now. Now we are going to charge the, the system, put in some Freon. So we're gonna put some refrigerant oil into the system. And the way we're gonna put it in is through here. We're gonna remove these hoses on the, on the AC compressor. That, that one also takes a half inch socket. This is the type of oil we're gonna be using, uh, the high viscosity. So we're gonna be using this funnel. Uh, we made it, put this hose right here. We're gonna bring in the oil through, through this hole. And while the uh, oil is going in, we're gonna be rotating the, the clutch so that the oil flows in. Some people bring in the oil through the yellow line but we're gonna bring it through here so we're turning the clutch like that The oil is filled now. As you can see, it started to come out. So now we're gonna put back the hoses and rotate the clutch. So we already put the new seal washers and uh, just put the nut back in and just tight it. So now the hoses are in. So now we're just gonna rotate the clutch a little more you can also put in the oil through this hose right here as you can see we put it in through this hose so so this is the same line you can take off this nut and take this hose off the this bracket and just funnel, funnel the the oil through that through that hose so now we're getting ready to put in the freon before you put in the freon 
if you want to double check all your hoses that they're not damaged uh, this is a time where you can replace them also if you want to replace the filter dryer receiver this one right here as you can see is very old and corroded for this in this case we're not gonna replace it right now I'm just gonna keep the same one but it is better if you do change it so now we're gonna vacuum the system we have here the vacuum pump so to vacuum the system you got we're gonna start uh, by um, putting in the couplers so the blue one is the the low and make sure that you have the coupler closed right now and just push it in like that and now you're gonna open the coupler and do the same thing on the on the high and also open up the coupler so as you can see right here if you turn left that's how you close it and if you turn it right that's how the coupler is going to be open so on your manifold gauge make sure the shut off valves are closed uh, in this system if right there is closed and then if you turn the knob up that's where it's open your yellow hose put it into the vacuum pump and turn it on so as you can see right here the gauges are going down So we vacuumed the system already. As you can see, it brought it down close to 30, on the negative 30. So now we're gonna close this valve. So we're gonna leave the the gauge like this. Uh, we're gonna leave it for like around 15 minutes. If the gauge goes back to the zero, that means we have another leak on the system. It's recommended for you guys to leave the, the gauge like this for like for an hour just to make sure that you don't have any leaks. We left it only for 15 minutes. Now we're just gonna remove the this hose right here from the pump and plug it into the to the Freon tank. And just open the, the container you might want to shake it a little bit and you're also going to need a, a scale a digital scale so we're going to put 3.88 pounds of freon that's what i was told that this truck takes uh usually the Somewhere around here, it'll have a sticker telling you how much Freon it takes. So you might want to check that or check with the dealer to see how much Freon you need to put in your, your system. But in this case, we're going to put in 3.88. So once you have your scale ready and you have your tank open, plugged in your yellow hose. Now you want to drain all the air in the yellow hose and that you just have to loosen that one a little bit once you see the the freon coming out that means there's no more air in, in your hose so now we're gonna put in the freon uh we're gonna do it with the truck turned on some people do it with the, with their trucks off but uh we like doing it with the truck on so here i have the truck turned on as you can see the temperature, it's on 80 Fahrenheit. Now, all you have to do is 
turn your AC on on full speed and make sure the light is on that means this is your compressor light that means your compressor is on so just make sure the, the light is on and all the way to the to the cold so all the way down so now we're gonna open the gauge manifold and your on your scale it should uh, be to 3.88 pounds and your ace compressor clutch should start spinning so just make sure that your clutch fan engages when the gauge goes around 280 as you can see the, the clutch fan engage already so the AC goes down to a little under the 40 degrees so the system work is working good now so we put 3.9 pounds of Freon so now we're just gonna put the the grill back and everything's done. Make sure we're before you take out the the couplers, make sure you have them closed. Make sure you close your Freon tank. And before you take off the couplers from your system, make sure they're they're on the closed position. <laughs> 